Red Bull's creation of an engine facility at its Milton Keynes base, first to run continuation Honda power units and then what are currently planned to be in-house engines beyond that, might appear forced by circumstances. But it gives Red Bull a unique advantage over every other team in Formula 1. The benefits of having complete control of both chassis and engine design are well known, with Mercedes, Ferrari and Renault-owned Alpine all benefiting from this integration. For a technical director, the chance to have full oversight of both the chassis and engine side, managing the compromises between the two for optimum performance, is a dream come true. You could only imagine how excited Adrian Newey is about the prospect at Red Bull. Subscribe to the race so you never miss any of our F1 videos, and to be alerted as soon as there's something new to watch, chime the notifications bell. Red Bull will soon have a far more versatile engine facility than any of its rivals, given there are no permanent ties to any engine manufacturer. That chameleonic quality will allow it to reshape its engine programme to serve the requirements of any future engine partner. According to team principal Christian Horner, the current plan for the change in engine regulations scheduled for 2025 is to produce Red Bull-badged engines. But what's unique about Red Bull's setup is that if it does attract a manufacturer partner, it can offer anything from a pure badging deal in exchange for cash through to a turnkey engine operation, and everything in between. That gives it remarkable technical and commercial flexibility. Want to get involved in F1 but don't want the liabilities of employment and facilities? Well, Red Bull will soon have a fully equipped, fully staffed facility up and running. While it is a huge investment, it is perfectly suited to meeting the requirements of a manufacturer without being entirely beholden to the need for such a deal. Red Bull is having its engine cake and eating it, albeit for a hefty price. Perhaps Red Bull's ambition has already opened doors for the next generation engines in 2025. By then, Red Bull will already have had three years of experience running continuation Honda power units and have long since established Red Bull powertrains as a top-line engine operation. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff, who has already lost Ben Hodgkinson to become Red Bull powertrains technical director and will surely lose further staff, has even suggested Volkswagen might already be lined up. Red Bull insists it's all about its own engines right now, but who knows where talks might have advanced to behind the scenes. Even if the Volkswagen suggestion is wide of the mark, and after all, it's already committed significant resources to sending Porsche and Audi back to Le Mans, Red Bull could offer a tailored partnership to everything from traditional manufacturers to the new wave of electric-only companies such as Tesla that would have no desire to produce the conventional part of the engine. Horner has regularly talked up the fact that this makes it the only team other than Ferrari that will make its own chassis and engine from the same location. While Ferrari can and does bring in other technical partners, Red Bull can work with any manufacturer. And while it's a big ask to set up such a facility, Horner has also stressed the value of what he calls a soft landing for the Red Bull powertrains project given it will run the continuation Honda engines from 2022 to 2025. Not only will this give it a competitive engine, which Honda is continuing to develop prior to the engine specification freeze at the start of next season, but it also means Red Bull can focus on the running of the engines while building its design capacity, and working on new engine projects in parallel. Horner has also called a level of investment a statement of intent, stressing it's the biggest Red Bull has made in F1 since it brought Jaguar Racing in late 2004 to create its main team. Already, there are signs that the disruption it caused to the F1 job market then, which led to public criticism from its rivals back in 2005 and 2006, will be repeated in the powertrain arena. Rivals felt that Red Bull was being too aggressive in how it poached personnel in that period, and it has the capacity to be just as much of a headache to its engine rivals, in particular UK-based Mercedes, this time round. There's also no lack of money. With the cost cap reducing what it can spend on the chassis side, this frees up plenty of financial resource for Red Bull to spend on this project. Red Bull does not do things by halves. 
you could argue it's a race team, not an engine builder, and therefore why should we expect its powertrain company to be a success? After all, it's up against Ferrari with all of its history, the incredibly accomplished and well-established Mercedes-Benz high-performance powertrains facility in Brixworth, and Renault, which has won multiple world championships over the years. But this is very similar to the criticism people once had of the team itself. As Lewis Hamilton famous said in 2011, when it was already winning championships, Red Bull are not a manufacturer, they are a drinks company. That quote sums up the prevailing feeling at the time, but Red Bull has shown it's far more than that over the years. Red Bull has proved its ambition and capacity to follow through in F1 time and again. And while it has the resources, it's a logical move to seek a manufacturer partner. It would be naive to imagine there are not all sorts of talks going on behind the scenes. It's too ambitious a plan for there not to be. After all, as Horner says, this is the first F1 engine facility of this magnitude to be set up in the UK aside from Mercedes HPP, which started out as Ilmore for the last half century. Without its powertrain operation, Red Bull would be seeking a partner for a Honda-style deal, an expensive, all-in design and operation deal that would require enormous commitment. But with what Red Bull's setting up, that's not the only way such a partnership could be structured. Ferrari is always going to run Ferrari engines, regardless of what deals it might do with specialist companies, but Red Bull's name is going to be on the car regardless of what the engine has to be called. With Red Bull holding the facilities and potentially significant intellectual property, it should also be insulated from the loss of a partner. Honda's decision to quit is what forced it down this road, but now Red Bull can stay in control of its own destiny, having used engines from Cosworth, Ferrari, Renault and Honda during its history, and been frustrated in its attempts to acquire Mercedes engines too. It will no longer be subject to the whims of engine manufacturers. For the majority of teams in F1 history, to attempt to create your own engine arm without being an automotive manufacturer would appear hubristic and doomed. But Red Bull has the resources to do this properly, and has already proved how serious it is by luring Ben Hodgkinson from Mercedes. There's plenty more recruiting where that came from. Even if Horner is being accurate when he says the plan is to run what are called Red Bull engines right now, the potential is enormous. Its ambitious plans should allow it to produce competitive engines, with the potential of attracting big money to a non-automotive manufacturer for naming rights, even if there is no manufacturer involvement. While teams like Mercedes, Ferrari and even Alpine Renault are also well placed with F1 moving into a new era, Red Bull might just have put itself in the perfect position for the long term. Let us know what you think about Red Bull's engine plans in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe.